Come on, if you really offer the Lord praise today, come on, let's do it. Come on, show him that you really appreciate life in itself. Come on, you really appreciate that he gave your life, health, and strength. The activities of your limbs. Come on, give God some praise in this place. Come on, where the praise is at? Where the praise is at? Come on, bring your minds in. Where's the praise is at? Where are the true praisers, the true praisers. People that know how to give God praise because he brought you out of a pandemic. How to give God praise because he woke you up this morning. Clothed you in your right mind. You got eyes to see, you got legs to walk, you got a mouth to talk. You got everything that you need. And all that you need is all that you need this morning. Come on, all that we need is all that we need. You know who that is. And that's nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, your tender mercy, your outstretched hands. You've been so good to us. You've stayed the hand of death, gave us another opportunity to come through these doors of worship and to lift up your holy name. Your name is a strong tower. The righteous, that's us. We run therein, and we are safe. Thank you, God, for your safety. Thank you, God, for your safety. Thank you, God, for your protection. Thank you, God, that what happened in Buffalo didn't happen in Cleveland. Thank you, God, for another opportunity. Hallelujah, God, to even make known the deeds among your people. That if it had not been for you on our side, we would not be standing here today. And so, God, that we don't take this moment lightly, but we thank you for what you're about to do and what you're getting ready to do. You're getting ready to download in us something new, fresh, and innovative. You're getting ready to endow us with greater power. You're getting ready to infuse us with something that we have never had in our lives. And so we're grateful for what you're about to do. And God, if we act like we expect it, we will receive it. If we act like we will accept it, we will receive it. If we act like it, that means you have to open your mouth. While we're praying, open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and say, God, you know what I need. You know what I have need of. And for God, that's why I give you glory, praise, and honor. We thank you for this time. And God, as we sit here and hear what thus saith the Lord, speak through these ears of clay. Let us, O oh God, hear what thus saith the Lord and what will speak to this church. In the name of Jesus, encourage their hearts of the believer. God, let them not leave you the same way they've come. But, oh God, let them understand and know that when they leave out this door, the best is yet to come. Father, so preach me like a mad woman. Put the devil on the run. Make him drop everything that belongs to the saints. God, in this hour that we live, let him drop everything that the devil has stolen. God, you're getting ready to give it back to us. In the name of Jesus, if you believe it, that's a good place to give him praise. Come on, in expectation, come on, give him praise. I'm getting back everything that I lost in 2019, 20, and 21. Thank you, God, that you're bringing it all back. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you for it. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my deliverer, in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, let's seal the prayer with the praise. Come on, open your mouth. Every time you open your mouth, God sees you. Even if you're under a mask, God sees what you're saying to him. Come on, open your mouth and give him a praise. If you need healing, give him a praise. If you need deliverance, give him a praise. If you need him to go touch somebody, give him a praise. If you need him to go walk on somebody, give him a praise. Come on, the Bible says, praise is comely to the upright. And the more you praise him, the more he will do for you. I know that to be true. Just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I came to have some church. 
Ask them, do you know how to have church? You got some people that stand next to you, they don't know what church is. But if you've been in a pandemic for over two years, you ought to know how to have church by now. Look down your row and tell everybody on this row, say, you're going to have to have church with me. I need you to open your mouth. Open your mouth. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Open your mouth. Don't be standing there. Tell them this road is a road that agrees that whatsoever things we find on earth, God's going to back it up in heaven. Who am I talking to up in here? God bless you. God bless you. Before you take your seat, I want to honor this house. Before you take your seat, before you take your seat. I want to honor, thank, look at your neighbor and say, you need to thank God for the feet that you have. Look down at your feet, even though they're pandemic, they're pandemic feet. I said they're pandemic feet, but thank God for pandemic feet. Because you could be paralyzed. Now just give your God some praise for keeping you through the pandemic. Yeah, I know we got pandemic feet. And I know, ladies, now that we're back in church, we're trying to look cute and, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, trying to keep everything together. Uh-huh. But when you've been in a pandemic for two years, flats was the best thing that could ever happen to a woman. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all, I'm going to say it one more time. Flats was the best thing that could have ever happened to a woman. And if you could just look at your neighbor, and if there's a woman standing next to you, just ask your neighbor, say, do you have your flats with your nine? Of course you got your flats. If you don't have them on, you got them in your purse, or you got them in your bag. Yeah, yeah. The flats have become an American Express guard. We don't leave home without our flats. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to wear the heels now. But we're going to have our flats. Amen. I don't know how I, get to, how I got to that. But anyway, let's bless God for the angel of this house. Come on, the man that stands on this corner and proclaims the gospel of Jesus Christ, your pastor, your leader, your slippers. The one and only Superintendent David McKenzie. He out there working. He is out there working. Here he is. Come on, y'all. Give it up. Give it up. As they as they say on tip, uh, as they say on television, here's David. <laughs> And he came in just in time. We appreciate you, uh, David, uh, Pastor David, for all that you have given unto us. I'm talking on behalf of the church. <laughs> all that you have given to us to lead us to this point and to lead us into this Joshua uh, maker, the place that we call our promise. We appreciate you. Come on, clap your hands and thank God for your leader. Appreciate you so very much. And I was so privileged and honored to have him to come and pick me up from the airport. I said, oh, pastor, you picking me up? He said, yes. He said, I would have it no other way. I said, oh, I'm so honored. <laughs> you know, because now they're using, you know, car services now and they have other people Help, um, helping or picking up armor bearers, help, uh, helping to pick up the, uh, the elite guests. And so just, just like a pastor, to show the hospitality. First time being at the Citadel. Come on, come on, clap your hands and thank God for your leader. And certainly we want to thank God for these pastors that are here, Pastor Roy. Come on, give it up for Pastor Roy. Then we have my good friend, the one and only, Pastor James Willis. Yes, longtime friend. 
And then Elder McKenzie, he's around it. They're all working. Isn't that something? They're working. They're, where is he? There he is. He, how you get on the floor? <laughs> want to make sure you get this but I'm so grateful for everybody but listen this day would not happen if it was not for the conference host come on y'all y'all gotta give it up for first lady Cecilia McKenzie God bless you God bless you I'm so so thankful to be here I'm going to talk about her because she is my Model. She models for DCC, the Rose Collection. Come on, don't play a hate. Congratulations. She knew what to do on this day. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In her purple, in her purple. Hallelujah. But we are honored to have First Lady of the Jurisdiction here today, Lady Heron. I'm so happy to see her walk in here. It is absolutely wonderful. We also have, of course, um, Lady um, Hudson in the house, Tremel Hudson. That's my goddaughter, and I'm so glad that she came to help and assist me. My daughter couldn't make it, but I'm glad that she's here. One more time, give it up for Lady Hudson. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord if y'all be nice. I may do a little song. I need some water. I may do a little line or something. Y'all don't think, I don't think y'all want me to sing. But I'm, I promise you, I'm just going to get you, I'm going to hit you and quit you today. Um, I know that God has got some great things that he is about to do for the kingdom right now. We are in a great season of our life coming out. Anybody know you're coming out with your hands up? Matter of fact, you came out. With your hands up. Get your hands up and say, Lord, I thank you for bringing me through it all. And through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. There's a little song that says, broken, hearted, no, misused and abused. I've shed some tears, joy and pain. I've been through the fire and the rain. I am facing right now trials that I've never been in, but I'm a hanging on. Every word he said, here in the Bible, that we read, I put my hope, that's all I know to do, put my hope in him, trusting that you, Lord, you're going to send me through, leaving that faith, that's all I know, is the only way, Lord, bless my house. Let's see. Do y'all know it? Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you. Oh, here I stand with outstretched hands, crying out to you, Lord. I need a refreshing. I'm empty, Lord. Got nothing else to give. My faith in you, I vow to be in your will. I put my, 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 my hope, uh -huh, my hope in you. Trust in that new Lord. You're going to see me through. Believe in and faith. That's all I know. It's the only way. Lord bless my, yeah, there it is. Come on, y'all, help me say. Listen, y'all, listen, listen. For so many years now, we've been singing, preaching, and praying, telling the world about your goodness and your saving grace. I've seen you do miracles time 
in here. Ooh, I am still here. Yes, I am. It's by the grace, his unmerited favor that gave all of us another chance. Oh, it's by the grace. Can I get a witness? Can y'all just wave your hand if you're glad to be in the land of the living? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's by the grace. I don't know where I would be if God had to had his hand on me. Oh, I'm still here, yeah. It's by the grace. Oh, every time I think about what God kept me from, I gotta say, oh, oh, oh. most of us in here had COVID. I said, most of us in here had COVID. You ought to wave your hand and say, I'm still here, yeah. Yes, by the grace, he thought enough of you. He thought enough of you to keep you here. Oh, I'm still here. Some of y'all was on the ventilator. But you ought to thank God that he got you out just in time. Oh, oh. It's by the grace of oh, Yes, I am still here. And it's by the grace of God. Come on, put them hands together. Give God some praise. 
Celebrate your survival. Celebrate your survival. If you think about where you were in those two years, and God spared your life, you got so much to thank him for. Hallelujah. I told the Lord that if he spared my life. He wasn't going to have to pump me. I didn't need a praise team to pump me up to praise him. Because when you start thinking, that's the psychological thing about it. When you start thinking of his goodness and what he did and how he preserved your life, you'll start thinking. I don't think I got but a few witnesses because if you think about where you were when your life was almost cut off, like on the operating table, and you didn't know anything about it, but the prayers of the right. And see, the, the, the problem that I have with a lot of us is that, not y'all, I'm talking about people in Detroit. Uh, <laughs> Y'all a little slow up in here, Jesus. The problem I have with the people of God is that something drastically, terribly happened for you to get your praise on. I don't want to wait till that time. And the more you praise him, the more he'll keep that away from you. That's a good place to holler. That's a good place to holler. That's why, that's why, you know, it don't take me a long time when I come into his presence. He said, enter into his gates, not sitting on the pew, but enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And then he said, when you enter in, you're walking down the aisle, getting to your seat. When you get here, enter into his court. Look down your row and say, that's what we need to do right now. Praise him. You can praise God up on something. You can praise him up on healing. You can praise him up on God taking care of your children. You can praise him up on the situation on the job. You can praise him up. And the Bible said, let God, look at your neighbor and say, quit sitting on God. Quit sitting on him. Quit sitting on him. Let him get up. Let God arise. And he'll make you play your haters. Leave you alone. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, by this time tomorrow, some of your player haters gonna have to recognize. Don't fool with me. Yeah, yeah. I had to get that out. 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 I know, I know after a pandemic that the saints should be going crazy by now. Because first of all, you're here in the church. Two years we was out of the church. We couldn't get our praise on like we can do. Because you had some folk in the house and they telling you to shut up while you trying to, hey, glory, glory. So God lets you get to the church house. And since you're here, look at your neighbor and say, you need to make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, all ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence. Hallelujah. Get your Bibles, get your Bibles, get your Bibles. I'm so glad to be a part of this women's conference, this women's conference weekend. 
who I'm sure um, has been a delight to all the women, everybody that's been blessed in this weekend. Come on, wave your hand. Amen. And, and let me tell you something. If you're a part of the ministry, you need to be a part of it. You don't just show up on just special days. Now, that's another thing that God is doing. He's taking attendance. <laughs> yeah, since we're out, since, since we're here now, he's taking attendance because it, the next time something happens, He's just trying to find out if you're going to remain the same. You don't have to beg people to come to church. But you know this is the Lord's day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to continue to rejoice. And this is the day. We do everything we want to do during the week. We go anywhere we want to go. Y'all ain't hearing me. But when it comes to God's day, for the Lord's day, we say, hmm, I don't feel like I want to go today. I'll watch online. You say, I'll watch online. Online ministry is for those that, that can't get to church. If you don't say nothing, you're guilty. You're the main one staying home. You better clap your hands. Clap your hands so you won't look guilty. <laughs> clap your hands. Online ministry was the best thing we had. It was the best thing we had for this pandemic. And that was how we stayed connected. It's because of the online ministry. But don't let... Don't let that keep you from coming to church. I know some people work on Sundays and said that's what online ministry is about. And there are some people that have other things that they have to do that's necessary. Testing one, two. Uh -huh. But the church folk, I won't say church folks, the saints. The saints ought to know that I need to get to church because I need the word to carry me from Monday through Friday. Saturday. We only have one day in the week. Of course, we have Bible study for those of you that want to get enriched through the week. Uh, Lord, here I'm making an announcement. But I just it's just a reminder. Look at your neighbor and say it's just a reminder, just a reminder. That God ought to find us in his house. Thank you for those two claps. I said, God ought to find us in his house, especially on his day. And that's what it's all about. Uh, all the women, wave your hand. All the women, all the women, wave your hand. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. It's a blessing that God has allowed us to, to arrive here 2022. In this season that we're in, some seasons that we're in may not be all the best. But you ought to thank God that you're here. Yeah, the Winans wrote a song that says, millions didn't make it. But I was one of the ones that did, and I'm grateful about it. So this, this Travailing Women's Conference um, is now telling us that we cannot no longer do the norm. The norm is normal. We can no longer do what we have been doing. We have to go to the next level. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, you need to go to the next level? Go to the next level. Go to the, don't stay the same. Don't stay the same. If you find that things are just, it's going to lull you right to sleep. Find out something that is exciting and something that can get your career off the ground. And God has taken us and putting us in ownership. No longer renting. I said we're no longer renting. We are taking ownership 
of what God has allowed us to see and to have and to live in. Renting is just temporary, just to get you to ownership. And some of us have to do that to get us into ownership. Look at your neighbor and say, the next house you buy, it's going to have your name on it. No, 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 no. Let me put it this way. The next houses you buy. See, that's what I'm saying. If you're going to the next level, you can't look at where you are right now. You got to see yourself there. The I said the next level is the houses that you buy. It's going to have your name on it. Come on, clap your hands. I'm trying to help somebody in here. We're no longer renting. We are buying and buying it up. That's where we are. Next level, next level. Let's go to the book of Joel, the book of Joel, the book of Joel. Half of my time is already gone. I'm going to give you about 15 minutes. The book of Joel, chapter 2, uh, verse 25 is where I want to go because I want God to show us where we are. And not just where we are, but the, everything that we've lost in the last two years that God's getting ready to give it back to us. Now, let me certify the house. Every time you raise your hand in his house, he goes to your house. Oh, so now you got your hands up now. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, now if you're going to sit on this row, I need you to get your hands up. If you need God, if you need something from him, get your hands up. Get your hands up. He's going to be looking at you to see if you really need a promotion. To see if you're ready for this next level. To see if you can handle this next building. Y'all ain't hearing me. To see if you're ready for this next company. Y'all ain't hearing me. Mm -hmm. Because you have not because you ask not. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, we got to go to the next level. So the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 25, I'm going I'm to put, put an ease on your feet right now. I'm going to put an ease on your feet. i put an ease on your feet. No, I'm going to make you stand up now because some of y'all say, no, that's too easy. Stand up for the word of God. <laughs> Lord, touch the knees of the women. Touch the knees of the women. Touch their knees, God. Touch their knees. Anybody need their knees touched today by the Lord? Hallelujah. I want them to touch my knees so I can continue to keep shouting. <laughs> the book of Joel, chapter 2, 25, it says, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and my great army which I sent among you and ye shall ye shall ye shall when I restore ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied Praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people, that's us. Look at your neighbor and say, that's us. My people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God. All of us in the pandemic, we knew where God was. We knew, had, we knew that he was in the midst of us even going through. And here he's saying that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. I want you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God's going to make it up to you this year. 
Tell somebody on the other side, say, neighbor, God is going to make all of this that you missed in the last two years. He going to make it up this year, this year, this year. Come on, speak it in your spirit and say, this year, God's going to make it up to me. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. God's going to make it up. Everybody that have been stolen from you, have been taken from you, God's going to make you feel better about it. God's going to take you out of grief. He's going to take you out of those epiphanies. He's going to take you out of them, everything that the enemy has held you in. God's getting ready to make it up to you. How's he going to make it up, Sister Dorinda? I got to come to church. I didn't say nothing then. I said, how is he going to make it up to you? Look at your neighbor and say, you got to come to church. God's going to do three things for you. He's going to restore. He's going to reproof. And he's going to reset. He's going to restore. He's going to reproof. And he's going to reset. I just look at somebody and tell them this, say, it's my time. <laughs> tell them you've waited. Now it's my time. And it's my turn. I'm looking for God to do something for me. I've been helping everybody else. I've been going to people's houses and helping them out. Now it's my time. I've waited. So many years, they turned me down. Now it's my time for promotion. It's my time for elevation. It's my time for favor. And how many of y'all know that favor is what money can't buy? Yeah, money can't buy favor. Favor puts you in places that so many people wish they'd be where you are right now. Favor! It's the only thing that will let you know that there's something that's going before me and I can't see it. Favor's going in the room talking to people for you. Favor speaking your name up to your employer. Favor is getting ready to allow you to sign some papers and your credit is jacked up. Y'all better talk to me. I said every time you raise your hand in his house, he goes to your house. I don't know if I'm talking to your house if you don't have your hand up. I said favor is getting ready to allow you to sign some papers that you never thought you would put your signature on. I look at your neighbor and tell him, say, I feel favor. I feel it. I feel it coming to my house, coming to my house. Coming to my house, coming to my bank account, coming to my mailbox. God, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. My God, my God. That's it. It's your time. It's your season. It's your turn. So if it's your turn, God's going to restore and he's going to reproof, and he's going to reset. You know, let me just say this to you, saints. We are living in one of the greatest, finest hours of the church. Women, now we are at a place where God is allowing us to have a little bit more liberty. And you ought to thank and praise God for the leadership that God has given us a little bit more li liberality, allowing us to be able to do the things that we need to do to keep ministry moving forward. It takes all of us to make ministry turn. It takes all of us to continue to, continue to pay our tithes and give our all. It takes all of us to do it. 
Nobody can half step. And again, let me tell you something. God knows when you half step it. He knows when you have it and when you don't. But one thing that I found out that many of us have been called to do what we are doing, but there's a greater call than where you are. I want you to get stuck into where you are because God is getting ready to allow you to embrace destiny. God is getting ready to put you in a place that the enemy said you'll never see it. But look at your neighbor and say, in the next few days, God going to give me a sneak peek of where I'm getting ready to go. Come on, a sneak peek of where I'm getting ready to go. Eyes haven't seen it. Ears ain't heard it. The great things that God has in store. And some things God will allow you to just sit there and wait and wait and wait until he gets your attention. Why haven't you got some of the things that you desire in life? It's because God said it's not time yet. You've been there, and maybe some of y'all are right there right now where you, can, you have not seen what God has done. But can I tell you, he's always working. I said, he's always working. While you sleeping, he's working. While you eating, he's working. While you shopping, ladies, he's working. Whatever you're about, God is still working. He doesn't lose time. But he keeps up with time and shows you that when I wait on the Lord, he shall do what? Renew my strength. That's the good thing I love about waiting. Sometimes I don't understand it. And I'm like, Lord, huh, how long is this going to be? And he says, did not tell you wait on me? Because I don't want you to go ahead of me. You're going to mess something up. I don't hear nobody in here. That's why we've got to make sure we got our trust in him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to what you know, but in all your ways. Y'all supposed to help me finish it here. Acknowledge him and he will. He'll show you what door to go in. He'll show you the people to talk to. Somebody will text you and say, I got the money. Y'all ain't hearing me. Somebody right now is waiting on you, but you got to hear the Lord. Many have answered the call and embraced the destiny of life. But I'm here to tell you the Bible tells us that he will pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. I love it. I love it. I love it. You shall prophesy. Now, you can't prophesy if you're living in any kind of way. I don't hear nobody here. I said the only reason you can prophesy is because it's in here. It's what you know. It's what you read. And the Bible says that all we had to do is ask and it shall be given. He said, seek and ye shall find. He said, knock and the door shall be opened. Well, when you prophesy, that means you are speaking aforetime. You're speaking in your future. That whatever I'm dealing with right now, I'm not going to be like this always. It's got to get better than this. I don't hear nobody in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got to get better than this. So if I say, Lord, I know that if I seek you first, the kingdom of God and all of your righteousness, you said that these things shall be added. And then you said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, you believe then you receive it and you will. Y'all ain't catching what I'm saying. Prophesying. You got to have the word to prophesy. You got to know the word to prophesy so you'll know what to say. Well, God, if you told me that I can ask anything in your name, I'm just crazy enough to believe that I can get it. 
Who am I talking to in here? Remember I told y'all that every time you raise your hand in his house, he goes to your house. So whatever the shortage is in your house, whatever's going on in your house, God can make it up to you by turning some things around. God can make it up to you by showing up in a very opportune time. God can make it up to you by allowing somebody to stop by your house and say, the Lord told me to give you this. Who am I talking to? Y'all never been there? You never been there? Oh, trust me, it'll happen once you know who you serve. Serving the Lord is the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm telling you, I'm so thankful that I know God for myself. Because you know what? Sister Dorinda is very spoiled. I'm so spoiled, and you know who spoiled me? The Lord spoiled me. Because I go to him in prayer. And when I go to him in prayer, guess what he does? He said, if you want it, I'd see you serving me, so I'm going to make it happen. Lord, I got to get happy off my own stuff. He said, I see you want it. I see you serving me, so I'm going to make it happen. I dare you to just look at somebody and tell them, say, God sees you. He sees what you want. And guess what? In a few days, he's going to make it happen. Who am I talking to in here? If it have to be on your cell phone, it's going to happen. If it have to be through an email, it's going to happen. If it have to show up by somebody, it's going to happen. If you believe it, clap them hands, give God some praise, and say, what a mighty God that I serve. It's your time. It's your season. You've been waiting long enough. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but waiting has a whole lot to do with me spiritually. Because every time I sit and wait on him, God want to know what you're doing while you're waiting. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Uh-huh, because you can't just sit around and twiddle your thumbs. You got to get up and do something. Y'all ain't hearing me. I said you got to get up and do something. You had an excuse in the pandemic because we couldn't come to church. But there was a thing that called outreach. You still should have did outreach because you was out away from the church. And we still got to do ministry. But I stopped by to tell you that we've got to make sure that we work the works of him that sent us while it's day. Said when I come, no man can work. What was nighttime? Nighttime was the pandemic when a lot of souls were lost. That was nighttime. But I thank God he gave me another chance to work while it's day. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to work. Yes, I am. I got to work because he's been too good to me. I got to tell somebody what the Lord has done. I got to tell the world about this. Tell the nation that I've been blessed. Tell them what Jesus, what he has done. Tell them that the comforter, the thing that kept us, what he has done. And it brought joy. I can't hear nobody say joy. I said it brought joy to my soul. And it got peace in my mind. That's the reason I got to keep praising him. Because of what God has done. You know the locusts have eaten everything around you. But you still 
you're still around. You tried your best to make it, make things happen during the pandemic. And God let it be. But guess what? Even though I tried to do good, evil was always present. But thanks be to God who's given us the victory to long hard, to shout when it looks like there's doubt, to praise him when it looks like things ain't coming together. That's what David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And it's praise. Oh, y'all. And it's praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm so glad I see where I'm going. I'm so glad I don't have to worry what the enemy says because now that I'm on another level, I ain't got to worry about what folks say because he was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And now I know by his stripes, anybody been healed. That's a good place to raise your hand. He's healed you of high blood pressure. He's healed you of tumors. He's healed you of cancer. He's healed you of situations that the enemy said you were going to die. But you made up in your mind that I got the word on the inside. It says that I shall not die, but I'm going to live. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I shall not die. I got too much money I'm getting ready to make. I shall not die. I got too many things that I got in mind. I shall not die. Die. I gotta see my children make it get their degrees. I shall not die. I got too many places that I got to go. Have I got a witness that I'm gonna live and see the goodness of the Lord? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm still here. Yes, I am. Because there's something greater that I got to do. There's something bigger that I got to get. There's so much knowledge that I got to gain. Because he told me, if I look to the hills from whence coming my help, my help, my help comes from the Lord. Anybody need help? You got to get your hands up. Because the more you get your hands up, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let us praise him for where we are. Let us Magnify him for how he brought you. He never left you. He kept you. Danger seen and unseen. Folk dying on the left and the right. But God spared your life. You got enough to praise him. You got enough to tell him glory. You got enough to tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because living, he loved me. Dying, he saved.
saved me. Prayed. He carried all my sins far away. But rising, he justified me and free me forever. One day, I said one day, he's coming back at a church without a spot or wrinkle. It'll be a glorious day. Can I get a witness? Won't you wanna see your loved ones? Don't you wanna see the folk that died and went on to glory? You gotta make sure your acre holds and grips the solid rock. Who is that rock? It's Jesus, my God. Who is that rock? It's the stone that the builders rejected. Who is that rock? It's Jesus, my company keeper, my soul saver, my peace giver, my bill payer, my body healer, my pain killer, my grocery buyer, my discount giver, my crack destroyer, my heart fixer, my mind regulator, my head lifter, my body raiser, my debt canceler, my problem solver. He's a marriage counselor. He's a mountain mover. He's a devil driver. He's a hell house chaser. He's a dead raiser. He's a navigator. He's my aviator. He's a comforter keeper. He's a burden bearer. him I said I know him do you really know him come on clap your hands open up your mouth and say Lord anyway you bless me I'm gonna praise you anyway you bless me I'm gonna give you glory anyway you bless me I'm gonna seek you come on seek the Lord while he may be found Call upon him. He's so near. All you gotta do, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates, even lift them up. Ye everlasting door. The king, the king, the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? Do you know him? Who is? The king of glory, he is a pandemic keeper. He is a pandemic keeper. Can I get a witness? Shout it out. Shout it out. Do you know him? Come on, if you know him, you ought to feel him every now and then.
got to know what to do to get in touch with him. your hands and give God some praise in this place. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, open your mouth and praise him. Come on, praise his company to the upright. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Bless your name. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm looking to go to the next level. I'm not going to no longer stay where I was. Now my fasting is going up. My prayer life is going up. Even my connection with the church is going up. I can't wait on anybody else because let me tell you something. This is an individual thing. Mom and daddy got us in the church. They trained us up in the church. But once you get in it and know it for yourself, honey, you smooth sailing on your own. That's why I'm not going to have to pump and prime people to get their praise on because I already know that God is a deliverer and he's a way maker. He'll do anything but fair. So glad that I know him for myself. Mama's gone now. But I know him, Dorinda Noah, for myself. There's things that they taught us. The things that we heard our parents say. How they was trusting God and believe God for certain things and see those things happen. And now we're grown now. Now I've experienced it for myself. And I know that he is the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Can you please stand? This is the time that we give to God. We offer to the Lord this time where it used to be a time where we could come around the altar and give our lives to the Lord. But the pandemic has changed so much. 
And I know that there are some ministries that are still doing it. But there are times when we need to understand that God shifts things for the saints. God shifted for two reasons. One is to see if you're spiritual enough to, enough to know what to do. And then the other is to see how are you out about souls. Are you still going to do the kingdom business? So now they shifted things now where we can't work with people on the altar like we used to. So now we have to kind of stay in our seats and look at what God did. Now he's got everybody going back to the sinner's prayer. Think about that for a moment. I said he got everybody at the seats when y'all used to point fingers at folk that would come down to the altar knowing that you should be on the altar because the altar is for the saints. Now God shifted that thing around. Now we got to stay right where we are and we got to accept the Lord with everybody else. New outreach. And this is the way that we do it now, even in our church. Everybody just lift your hands and we want you to believe this in your heart. If you have not had a relationship with God, this is your opportunity. Sister and brother, you don't know what a great experience this will be for you. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, your life will never be the same again. And so all we do is just repeat the sinner's prayer. And if you mean it in your heart, God will forgive you and take you right on in. So it's not for just the sinners, it's for the saints too. So we say, hey, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for this time that you let me have. I thank you, Father, for you being all that you've been in my life. You've kept me. You've never left me. You've been everything that I needed. And, Father, today, if you would please, Jesus, save me again. Save me again. I'm meaning it from the bottom of my heart. Please, Lord, save me. Take out anything that would be offensive in ministry. Forgive me for it right now. In the name of Jesus, come on, come on. Forgive me for it right now. I want a clean heart. I want a clean way. I want you to use me, Father. Please, Lord, take me in as your son or your daughter, and help me to be what you would want me to be. Say, I believe that you died and you were buried, but you rose today in my soul. Please, Father, take me back, and I'll thank you, and I'll give you glory, and I'll give you praise, knowing that you are my Savior. In Jesus' name, come on, clap your hands. If you said that prayer and you believed it in your heart, even those that are watching online, you are saved today. And you are saved today. Look at your neighbor and say, your life is going to be so much better because you know Jesus for real. I know some of y'all saying that, but you've been knowing him all your life. But life now is sweet. And my joy is complete for I'm saved, saved, saved. Are you glad you're saved? Say it one more time. Like now it's a week, oh yeah. And my joy is complete. Why? Because I'm saved. Come on, clap your hands if you know you're saved and glad about it. Hallelujah. I want to do this real quick. I want to do this real quick. I know that uh, usually this is a faith offering that we give. If it's okay, First Lady, um, Pastor, amen. I want to do this real quick. 
you could take a load off your feet for just a moment, but I want you to understand what's going on in ministry. We have finally come back into the church full force, and it is a blessing being here. Uh, I said it's a blessing being here. Let us not take this for granted, because remember, they let us out the first time, and we had to go back in. Oh, y'all don't remember that? Yeah, we had to go right back in. We, we couldn't come to church. Now we out. And I want you to know that now that you are out, you need to make this the best run of your life. Because we're running for Jesus. Amen? Amen. I want you to do this. I want you to do a sacrificial offering today. I'm going to give $100, $200. I didn't give in the first offering, but I'm going to give $200 in this offering on today. And I know this is Women's Day, and I'm going to do something just a little different. I'm going to ask all the men to stand, all the men to stand. And I want men, I need you to help us today. I'm going to get the women. I'm going to get them in just a moment. But I want all the men to stand. I want these men to help us to um, let's make this a great day for the ladies. And ladies, we're going to come back for the men. We coming back for the men. We're going to be here on day day. And we're going to support them. But we want the men to start out um, by just first giving. I'm going to ask every man, if you can, please get a $50 seed in your hand. $50 seed in your hand. I'm not going to push it too hard. I'm not going to push it too hard because I don't know what First Lady has for this day. You may have an assessment that you have to give. But I just want to have the men start out first. The men, ladies, you know where I'm coming, so don't be up there taking all day trying to get your money out. You get your money, just bend over and get your money out. If you got to go there, praise the Lord. <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. But come on, men, I need y'all to come down this, this center aisle. Come down that center aisle. Come down that center aisle. That's right, the cash app. The cash app is dollar sign elder, E-L-D-M-C-K. That's the cash app. Now, y'all men, y'all sat down too fast. I got scared. Y'all got, I got scared. I need the men to remain standing. Hello, men. I need the men to remain standing. God bless you. These pastors are giving today. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Roy, Pastor Willis, and, and the shepherd is given. Amen. Men, I need y'all to stand. All y'all that stood just then. Now listen. I hope y'all going to do what I tell you to do. Come on. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, M Mr. Cash App back there. Thank you. Now that's what we do. We do hold our phones up at least. We don't just sit down. <laughs> no, thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Come on. Give these men a hand. Give these men. Thank y'all so much. Uh, I didn't see any more men standing. I'm, I'm trying to find out where all the men are. Praise the Lord. Thank you, my, my brother. Sound man. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. All right, ladies, it's your turn. It's your turn and it's your time. So get up. Come on, ladies, get up. I want every woman in the house, every woman in the house, every woman in the house, stand to your feet. Now, y'all shouldn't be digging in your purse now. Y'all gave y'all plenty enough time to look in that purse. Come on. Many of y'all going to do the cash app. You know what it is already. You want me to do it again? Amen. Cash app is dollar sign E-L-D-M-C-K. And if you're doing it by cash app, uh, please make sure you raise your phone so that I'll know that you have given that way. Thank you, sweetie. Nobody sits down. I'm going to bless this offering. As you are giving. I want every woman in here to give it $50 if you can. If you can't give that 50, give that 30, give that 20. Come on, let's do those levels today. 50, 30, and 20. Come on, every person, every woman, every woman. Amen. Those of you that are giving the 50, let me see. Let me see your hand. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Give the 30. If you're giving the 30, let me see your hand. Amen. If you're giving the 20, let me see your hand. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Now, if you don't have that much to give, give the very best you can. Give the very best you can. All right? Will y'all do that? Father, I thank you for these 
that are standing and even the men that have given already. Father, I pray that you would bless these people, give them their heart's desires. You said that, God, if we give it, shall be given unto us. Good measures pressed down, shaken together, running over. You said that men will give it to our bosom. And so, God, as they give this seed today, Father, tomorrow around 12 o'clock, let them see and know that you are going to show up on their behalf because of their obedience of what they're giving on today. And, Father, I pray that you would bless them accordingly. Those that are giving the 50 and those that are giving the 30 and those that are giving the 20. You never let us down, God. You've always been there for us. I pray that you would bless your people and give them back everything that they've given in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Those of you that are going to give the money, the cash, you can actually come and drop it in the receptacle. And those of you who are giving by phone, let me see your phone. Thank you, sweetie. Let me see your phones. Let me see your phones. Amen. Now, if the rest of y'all should be coming down here. The rest of y'all should be coming down. That's right. That's right. Bless, 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 oh, bless, oh, I'm blessed in the sea, blessed in the field, blessed when we come and when we, we cast down, don't leave, oh, for the devil is defeated. Oh, bless, 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 anybody, everybody, somebody, everybody, hey, yeah, help me say, say we're blessed in the, yeah, say we're blessed when we come. Oh, we can. Well, that is so good to see you, early. Bless you. Devil is defeated. One more time, say bless. 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 I'm blessed. Bless. Bless. Anybody? Everybody? Somebody? Hey, yeah, come on, hey, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around, it's going to work in you, yeah, say God will, it's going to work in your field, hey, hey, say late in the midnight hour, he's going to turn it around. Yeah, one more time, I gotta let it go late. Say it will. And around, 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 and around. Hey, I love y'all. God bless you.